welcome back everyone um so this is going to be part two of introduction to revit let's make let's make a small little uh, building and let's make some sheets a floor plan and elevation and a section drawing <clears throat> um and that's that's all you need to know all right so once you start a new project as i said in intro to one um intro part one this is just a new imperial architectural template so everything is from scratch we start off here level one um i'm going to just go to architecture here build a wall and that's w a for uh, a shortcut um location line this is where so notice where my cursor is in lo in relationship to the wall so that is at the finished face of the exterior side of the wall <clears throat> I can hit space to flip it okay um, you can change that to center line so that when you draw it it's drawn on the center line of the wall um, but that's never useful um, so just use exterior interior finish face interior or exterior um, anyway so let's just draw a little guy here let's Let's do 30, do, let's do 60, plus 7, let's do 68, okay. 68 by 68. All right. Um, I'm going to hit 3D because that's my default uh, shortcut for the 3D view. Uh, this is not a default setting. The, nothing is set up for the default. So just go to your shortcuts and view um, or just look at my... YouTube video on um, shortcuts. All right, so now that we've drawn our wall, <clears throat> um, bum, ba, dum, what else do we want to do? Well, we want to set our levels, right? Uh, we should have probably done that second or first. Here we go. I don't know. Let's do 15. All right. We want a third floor. I'm going to do CO to copy. That is a default. All right. Let's set these to 12 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet, 12 feet. All right. <clears throat> let's do one more. Um, okay. Let's do. All right. Fine. Okay. All that is. Anyway. Um, let's set this to 15 feet. Whoops, whoopsie daisy. Um, I don't want to set it. So anyone new to Revit, you can set it to the level above and it will lock to that level. Um, but s later on in Revit, you'll see errors accumulate um, right here right under warnings. Um, and a lot of those errors come, come to be because Revit draws relationships between elements to other elements so that would be drawing a relationship to from our walls to this level and if anything gets in between that <clears throat> you know something gets jealous of another thing then you'll get a lot of warnings and then it'll act the way you don't want it to act and that could be any sort of way i don't, I, I don't know you know you, you never it's hard to tell so anyway we have our first floor uh i'm gonna do a control copy actually no i'm not that's just our first floor. Uh, I'm going to go back to our first floor plan. I'm going to hit FL to create a floor. That's also an architecture here. And then you can hit floor. Uh, so I'm going to hit RR because, okay, I guess I don't have that selected. So I'm just going to go from endpoint to endpoint. You can also hit SE so it flies to your endpoint without you having to go all the way there. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to hit FM because that's my shortcut to hit this check mark here. I'm going to tell you these shortcuts once or twice or three times, and then eventually I'm going to start flying through this thing so that you can just like uh, understand what goes on here. All right, uh, so by default, there's no families loaded in here, right? Um, 
we spoke, I can't remember everything I talked about in part one, but families are components in Revit that you build the project with. They range from, I mean, everywhere, ev everything and everywhere from doors to windows to doorknobs to uh, more door stuff. I'm just joking. Um, I mean, anything, furniture, uh, handrails. No, those are, those are different. Well, I mean, oh my God. Look, guys, right here, all right? Ducks, pipes, families, parking uh, spaces, elevators, the transportation system, special equipment, um, not so special equipment, so on and so forth, okay? So you have everything there. I'm pretty sure I said in part one, go through this. If you didn't, that's on you. I'm going to move forward, all right? So because they don't have many families loaded in here, I'm going to go insert, load. Uh, Revit does come with more <clears throat> families. They're just not all loaded in, you know, the template file. It has to not make it too heavy uh, memory-wise. So we can load whatever we want here. I just, I'm looking for some doors. I went to duck by accident. Um, boom, ba -dum, boom, boom. We can go to commercial. Cold drain. They got fancy. So once you're in an office, you know, when you're in an office, if you're in an office, you have your office door, you know, office standards, use those. Don't use uh, Revit doors as your standard file or standard families. <clears throat> All right, okay. All right, um, we have that, we have that. Let's build a wall here and here. <clears throat> I'm going to disallow join. I'm disallowing join because these are my exterior walls. Okay. Um, because these are my exterior walls uh, out here, right? <clears throat> Again, I was talking about relationships. Revit loves relationships. All right. I don't know what it is with Revit, but it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's very codependent, um, unless you tell it not to be. So I go in here and say, disallow join, disallow join, you're not old enough to be part of the exterior group. Um, again, because if this moves, oops, because if this moves, I don't want this to be affected in any sort of way, all right? Even if it moves past that, I don't want it to be affected in any sort of way. I'm getting an error here saying that there's element reversed. I don't delete element. Okay. I'm canceling because it really would have deleted it. Anyway, but that's that's the that's why I have to disallow these. Um, not because I grew up old fashioned or anything. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's do nine feet. Well, let's just do ten feet. Just whatever. And then let's do this twenty feet. Let's do eighteen feet. Let's do 20 feet. Okay, cool. So we have that there. I'm going to do DM, that's draw a mirror axis, that's the one that's highlighted there. SM to find the middle point of this. There, there. I'm going to do DM again, but uncheck the copy because I don't want a copy of it. I just want to flip it on that side. So I have the same thing there. That's going to be our stair. Boom, ba -dum, ba -dum, boom, bow. All right. I don't know where these stairs go. Maybe they go here. And maybe this one comes, but yeah, probably just directly out. Well, <clears throat> okay, so if we have, I'm just saying because if this is our property line here, then we really can't have this exit door encroach past. Well, I forget what the rules are, God damn it! This is what happens when, well, you know, when you're, when you're the man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there we go, let's put that there. Let's disallow this one. Put that there. And now, um, <clears throat> you can always tell that a wall has been set to disallow because of this icon right here. All right, that little T. All right, so we'll just click that. It's going to go uh, join, but we're going to hit TR to trim this to this. 
No, we're not. No, we're not. We're going to keep that as it was. We're going to hit SL. That's it. All right. And then take that to there. Take this to here. Delete that. That's fine. We're going to take that wall, move it, and we're going to move it starting from that to there. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I hit MV by the way. I hit MV to move, and then I selected the door as you know our starting cursor point, and then because you know I want it to be aligned there, but I can't hit align to the door thing, so that's one way to do that. Anyway, all right, level one to level two. Um, uh, location line. All right, so if you look up here, right under the ribbon, this long blue thin line. Oh, my Sturgill Simpson. All right, so look. So we're gonna change the location line. Exterior support left. Yes. So we're gonna go from here. All right, we're gonna go here. Okay, I don't like that. We're gonna step. It, we're gonna step back a little bit. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna hit DL for detail line. We got bam. A very crappy um, selection there. So we're gonna go to manage. Go to additional settings. Line styles. Drop this down. You don't need to. Um, we're gonna do one. That's one. Two. That's two. Three. That's gonna be three. Four. That's gonna be four. And so on and so forth, right? Because it's nice to have your line weights. Um, but I actually want just red. Um, so we're gonna go down here. And then I want a red dashed. Sorry, guys. But it's good that you see this. You know, now you know what's up. Uh, this is where the line pattern is, as it says at the top there. So we're going to do that because that's what I want. And then bada bing bada boom, I'm going to hit detail line, red. Just hit R, hit uh, enter. Oop, didn't happen for us. Detail line. Did I not change the color? Oh. Uh -huh. All right. So drop this down. Come back here. Change that. Change that. Change that. And then boom. D L. Red. OF for offset. Let's do five feet. Okay. All right. I wasn't that off with like where I started the stair. Um. So let's go back to stair. Gosh, who in the world would want to set that to the center line? Come on now. Um. Stair. Left. Thank you. All right, thank you. Wow, that's a lot of space. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> um, let's do 42 inches. Let's do feet. Oh boy. <clears throat> And V S E select end S E again to make sure I'm snapping it to that end. I'm gonna hit F M to finish. Just delete that. Fun fact: you can select something, hit B X, and it will fly you to your selection um, with a little section box, and then now you can move that section box around and play around with your view and see what's going on. You know. So this and this and this, these guys can come down to let's say 10 feet because you don't need it really any taller than that. Um, okay. Okay. So anyway, we can modify this wall. I'm just going to pick line and then pick another line, PL. 
and then trim these guys. Okay. FM. Again, whenever I say FM, it means I'm 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 doing finish edit mode. Um, just so you guys know uh, what it takes to <laughs> what it takes to make that shortcut happen for all the different types of edit modes. So again, if you're ever like, oh, why doesn't my shortcut work? Maybe it's not a shortcut for the type of tool that you're using because for some reason Rev Revit breaks it up in so many different groups and some of these are not even labeled correctly. I mean, I don't know what the hell that is. Like, how can you tell what that is? So I just did all of them and now um, whenever I hit FM, I hit, you know, it finishes. So eventually I'll go back in here, I'll add like a little floor uh, to finish this off. Um, I mean, we can do it right now. I'm going to hit FL. I'm just going to do the pick line and rotate around here. Do this, that, 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 and then do a trim here, 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 here. I'm going to set this up 10 feet, actually 11 feet because the floor is set. Let's say this is a floor. Well, we'll see right here. Okay. Once I finish, say, f once I hit finish, right? Let's say we want it at 10 feet, okay? Because I want it to come up to the bottom of here. And then I want the thickness of it to be above that, right? But floors, when you set them to a level, it always sets the top of the floor to that level, not the bottom. So we gotta account for this 12 inches and then do 11 feet here for it to set properly. Okay, so now it flies all the way up there. Uh, if we wanna change this to, let's say, a thinner floor, if we wanna duplicate this family, let's say we want a generic eight inch. Okay, we'll go into the structure here and then we'll change this to eight inches. Hit okay, enter, 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 okay. All right, now because we lost four inches, we need a uh, take away four inches from here. So this will now be 10, 10. Sorry, 10, 8. Right. Cool. Okay. Um, by the way, I'm in wireframe mode. That's down here. Uh, also, WF or HL to go back into hidden line mode. That, that I'm pretty sure is default. Okay, I'm pretty sure. You can always play around with your lights and shadows. The best lighting setup right here is 68, 15, 14. I've said this in other videos. I will keep saying it. Um, that's always good to have. So anyway, I'm going to get rid of this section box. I just wanted to see how that stair lands. Okay, and it's not so bad. I actually like it. Um, let's go to floor two real quick. All right. Um, boom, boom, boom. Actually, let's go back to 3D. I'm going to copy this. I already hit Control C. I'm going to paste a line to selected levels. I'm going to paste to level two. All right. I'm going to change this to an eight inch. All right. And then I'm also I'm going to go back into the edit boundary mode here. I'm going to offset OF um, by let's just say two inches. If you actually had like a real wall set up, we have just generic walls. If we had like a stud wall, metal, or wood, doesn't matter, we would set this boundary line to the exterior face of the stud, right? Because we want the stud to sit on the uh, end of the floor, generally speaking, okay? So I'm going to hit tab uh, so that I don't just offset this one. I'm going to offset the entire chain of lines here, okay? All right, so I'm going to hit FM. I'm going to hit don't attach. Always hit don't attach. You never want things to just automatically attach for you. No bueno. Okay. So now we see that the floor is kind of offset. And later on, you know, we can join these. Um, so it's a nice clean finish. But no need for that right now. I'm just going to go back in here. And dun, 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 dun. 
And then once I'm in here, what did we want to do? Actually, let's go back to the floor plan because I, we want to work in plan. Range base, none. Okay, thank you. Hmm. All right, so um, let's make another stair so that we can finish our staircases. We're going to do level two to three, that's fine. Same thing, okay. Actually, I guess we don't need to go that, I don't know, we don't need to be as extreme as we were. Can I just like, please? Oh, right, I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Just went in the zone. Um, all right, let me just finish this up real quick. All right, um, all honesty, it's a bad idea to just do that second stair without having my exterior walls in. Um, did I just eat something? Yeah, totally. So what? Yeah, so what? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, in all seriousness. Are we recording? What the fuck? What the fuck? Alright, so, um, as I was saying, um, it was a mistake to just continue with the stairs. I don't, I don't, it's too much of a detail. The first stair, fine. The second stair, let's grab at least our exterior walls <clears throat> here uh, and paste. I have it, you know, paste to selected levels. I have it to set to PP. Um, we'll do level two. We can delete this. We can delete this wall. Do a TR for trim. And there we have it. All right, now let's go to level two. Um, we can go back to our stair. All right. I just want to get the stairs out of the way. That's all. Um, let's change the width to 42 inches. Okay, thank you. Alright, thank you. Let's do to level 7. Alright, thank you. Let's check this bad boy out. Oh. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, we can go in here, double click, I'm going to do a PL. Actually, let's get out of that real quick. I'm going to take off the shadows because it's just getting cumbersome. Um, I'm going to edit this stir real quick, go into here. I don't want to end with a riser. And... Yeah, that's, that's good. Okay. What is this guy? It's so cool. Whatever. I'll just leave it. I mean, this is just a default stair. Alright, so anyway, um, I just don't want that little uh, riser, you know, flange showing right there. It's just, it's just a weird thing to have. So anyway, I'm going to hit OK. It's saying stair does not uh, meet the top elevation because it was counting that little riser as the top elevation, but our floor slab will be that last riser. Okay. Um, by that, I mean here, let's just edit this one. Um, we're going to have to edit two floors again. So let's pick that. Let's pick the bottom there. And then, all right, let's do some of this. Where's the other two? Pick one, pick one. What's our chain so far from here to there to there to there? Now let's loop this line. Let's just go from here to here. That's fine by me. I mean, this is like a huge gap. Uh, you really don't want. Oh, let's trim this piece here. You don't want uh, to waste this much space in between a staircase. But again, we're just we're just having we're just having fun here. Okay, <clears throat> so. Uh, now that we have that, let's go back to our level two. Okay. Um, coming back to 3D real quick here. Edit stairs. Hmm. Okay. So, we have that. We have our floor opening. The floor opening, though, is it set to the right one? Yeah, it's set to the right one. And do you guys see what I mean by getting rid of this uh, end with riser? Ching, boom. Okay. Okay. So, warnings uh, suck. Okay, you do not want to accumulate them over the span of like a huge project because they will like, you know, heavy up your project. Uh, but when you're just starting out, it's not the biggest deal. Okay. So let's go on, we can drop this and this, this and this. Um, and then DM one more time because I can trust that it's going to snap into place because that's how we got the walls there. So the staircase should go there perfectly as well. Okay, and it did. All right, so <clears throat> now that we have that there and that there. We can go back to level two, do the same thing for this staircase. All right, this one we can actually scoop back. Okay, we can scoot that back. 
So does that mean we have to, yeah, we have to modify our floor here. I'm going to do AL to align. Okay. And then instead of having that go there, I'm going to have that go to this face instead. I'm going to do finish, don't attach. Um, <clears throat> rule of thumb, do not click, do not check this box, okay? Just always hit don't attach, do not check this box. It's very hard to get this window back up if you want to have it. You may want to have it. It's don't give yourself a headache. Do not check that box. Just hit don't attach. All right. So, okay. Now that you know that, um, you know, we can draw in a rail to continue that. We'd want to do that. We will do that. Um, but first let's go back to our level two, copy this. Let's do a DM snap middle. Make sure a copy is selected. Okay, we know because the top railing is unchecked, so it's miscalculating, let's just say. All right, let's tab into this, select that, same method, DM, make sure copy's on. DM again, snap middle. Honestly, I could have selected any of those middle points. They're all the same middle points. Um, or they're all the same product for us, but whatever. So here on this floor, yeah, same thing. We, okay, it should be the same thing. Don't touch. Let's just see in 3D that everything is matching. Yeah, okay, cool. Fantastic. All right, so let's go back to level one. Um, we have these walls. Let's do a select copy. Jump to level two. Uh, I have PA which is equivalent to aligned to current view. All right. So I'm aligning these to the current view. So it's the same thing. All right. I don't like looking at this. So let's just do a railing really fast. All right, now that uh, we're doing our railing, right? Uh, let's just say we want to draw it. Okay. okay. Oh, this is not huh? funny. Okay. All right, when we draw this, let's go back to our 3D view so we can really look at it. When we draw this and hit finish, you'll notice that the railing is centered to that line that we just drew, right? <clears throat> and we don't want it to look like that. So you would first think that, okay, you can do an offset of this for, you know, whatever the railing calls for, let's say one and a half inches. You can do a tab to select through that. Oh, and by the way, if, if let's say you're up here, you set a number and you come down here and you try to tab and it's not letting you, just hit somewhere first and then do the tab okay so anyway so let's let's say you do the offset and then look we're wrong right um, we're not matching it so that's you know that's it's, it's just it's not a, it's not the best way to do it so instead of doing that let's just hit okay um, you'll notice here in the properties that it has an offset from path we can do it right here so let's do four inches okay let's do negative four inches okay let's do negative three and a half inches and could I have measured this um, and done this you know the proper way yes but oh my three inches worked oh I used one and a half before that's why all right so now funny right because I didn't see that we would have this based off of this sketch or did I? Will it meet all the way there? Yeah, okay, okay, cool. So it's a little funky there, because um, these are two different stairs. Um, but 
you know, stairs are not our problem. We design stairs for the most part in projects uh, and a contractor will see this out. It's more of like a design build. Um, but we make sure that all the minimum clearances are met. All the code requirements, egress requirements, that these dimensions are, uh, I mean, these stair widths are dimensioned properly based on, you know, your occupancies and your load counts. Um, so, okay, let's just fix this. You know, we're going to do, do BX. I'm going to do EOD to over. All right. So when you right click something, you can do override graphics and view to change the look of something just for this view alone. All right. Uh, default shortcut for that is EOD. All right. So I'm going to do a pattern. I'm going to go to dash because I just, I like my section box to look different from everything else. Um, Otherwise, it just gets lost in translation. All right, so now now I know where it is clearly. All right, so let's check out this floor plate here and how it's meeting. Right. All right, so let's just change this back to a 12 inch and then. Okay, let's just do a 10 inch because again, I'm meticulous and I don't want to look at that. And plus a 10 inch is a more reasonable um, more reasonable a slab width for a second floor okay cool but it still doesn't meet right so let's just do a double click to add a boundary al to align and that will align fm don't attach or you can hit escape and here we are okay cool great so i'm going to uncheck the section box if I check the section box again, it will come out the way we had it, gray and dashed. Fantastic. OK, cool. So we can go back to level two. Um, I'm sure that that mistake happens there. So let's do a DM copy, SM, SM, OK, S, S, S. What's happening? DM, SM, thank you. All right, DM, SM, thank you. All right, FM, thank you. Don't attach, thanks. Good. All right, that should be good. So make sure this guy actually works as well. And that I'm not just lying to myself. It's over here. Looks like it's working. Okay, good. Great. All right. Now we can move on with some cooler stuff. So uh, I'm going to take these exterior walls. All right. I'm going to shorten them just to the stair length here. I'm going to disallow join. I'm going to do that to both and all sides for... The exterior walls all right and i will tell you or I'll, you'll learn why as we go along but i will tell you why right now um we are going to create uh the units for this project that we're going to do like a multi-family here um as part of the unit groups and the unit groups will build the entire massing of the project right so everything that's not part of a unit will live independently therefore I want the ends of those to be detached from anything beside it so that uh, they're nice clean and unaffected by everything else okay so like I said before we want these unconnected uh, we want to just set the heights manually um, interior walls I'm not so you know, obviously you want them lower than the uh, next floor, but I don't, I also don't care if they're much lower, like 10 feet, um, because, you know, you're going to have a ceiling there, you're going to have another floor, um, so it's okay that these don't meet the, it's okay that they don't even meet the underside 
uh, you know, of the slab or your floor assembly or whatever you got going on. Just noticing I did these backwards here. <coughs> well, yeah, these are 12. And then, oh no, I didn't do anything backwards. I just didn't get to them. Okay, so cool. Anyway, now that we have those, let's go back to level two. Uh, we can even, let's go back to the, our elevation actually. Uh, let's change these to floor oh, two, more one. Yes. So in the begin, beginning of a project, like we're doing as you see, right? Uh, and it asks you, hey, do you want to, I'm gonna do a control copy of this so I don't have to keep typing it. Uh, do you want to rename corresponding views? Yes for now, because those, you know, let's check it out right here. Level two, I'm changing it to floor two. I want that to become floor two. But later on in the project, let's say, for whatever reason that you want to change this and you don't later on in the project, it's better off not to change this uh, automatically through that window prompt because you don't know what it's going to change. You don't know what view it's going to change. You don't know if it's going to change the like titles on your sheets. Um, so you'll have to go and check everything versus you just going and sh renaming the things that you have to rename. Okay, so I always suggest that you do things manually even though that they might seem a little tedious. I promise you that it's more tedious to go and back check what Revit may or may haven't done. Uh, so that's, you know, I promise, I promise you will see results that way. Um, better results by, by making sure that you do not change the corresponding views later on in a project. For now it's fine. Uh, and now it's not asking me do I want to change corresponding views because I haven't created uh, floor plans for those views yet. Um, and let's see here. All right, so we're almost done here. Oh, we can change this to roof. Okay, great. I just like the look better. All right, so where were we? Floor two. All right, so I'm going to draw some detail lines. Um, one, one great rule of thumb I learned when designing multifamilies is there's certain measurements you can play around with, like 26 feet, well, we can do 32, let's do 28. I don't know how much space we have to play with. Yeah, we don't have much space to play with, let's do 26. Oops. Cool. All right. So we got two units on this side and two units on this side. So I'm hitting DI for dimension. That is a default. All right. When you dimension something, uh, you select the things you want dimensioned and you click somewhere anywhere in space. That's not another element, right? I'm not, like, don't select here. If you want to end it, it will just add that to your selection. But you can click that to unselect it and un or you know take it away from your uh, dimension string. And then click in space to leave it there, right? You can always go back to it and check this equal sign if you want those dimensions equaled, all right? You can uncheck it and it will remain equal or you can keep it checked and if you change this, it will uh, keep this uh, pr dimensional parameter in locked for you, all right? So you can tell right there it's it's anchored to this one. Okay, so anyway, uh, we don't need this anchored. We don't want those locked. Again, avoid relationships when you can. Let's delete that. That's all I wanted. Just some, um, just some reference space. Okay, so let's do wall. This is a generic. That this is going to be generic. That's totally fine. Uh, I'm going to do disallow join because it's just going to. I'm just going to draw this and this. Okay. I want those disallowed. Uh, this is 20 feet for some reason. All right. Okay, great. Now I'm going to do a, another one. Let's do generic six. Okay. It's also disallowed. Disallow. Fantastic. All right. 
And then another wall. Uh, I want a three inch wall for the middle so that I can mirror them, this group that I'm making right now, and then have a combined six inch wall. All right, so again, here. And that's fine here because we still want some separation from the stair, acoustic separation. Um, yeah, that's, that's really good. All right, this is a, oh, that's because this is like, how deep is this? Not that deep at all. We want this to be at least 30, okay. I'm doing EA, EA, I set this up as trim, extend multiple elements, right? So I'll select where I want them to fly to and I'll select the ones I want uh, to be extended. So I can delete these lines. Um, bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -da -da -ba -ba okay. I can take this. GP to group unit one box. Let's go double click in here. Let's add a door in this unit. Um, let's add a window. Gosh, these windows are small. Oh, these are terrible windows. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry guys, let's do a uh, DI just to get these looking nice and equal. Okay, oh my god, how awful. Let's do one more. Uh, CS is to create similar, and then we can, we can hit OK. We can add, edit dimension and add to it. All right, go back in here, well, Let's do this. Oh, no. All right, let's just go show I hate groups. Okay. Window. Thank you. You know, I just don't want that many windows. So let's just do this. Uh, let's just change the width to six feet. All right, DI for dimension. I don't like dimensioning to the like center line of core of the wall. So let's go to manage additional settings, annotations, temporary dimensions, faces, uh, doors and windows, center lines, that's good, okay? But to my dimensions, I want to go to, f did I not do it? Did I not hit okay? Okay, it's just so small, I guess that's coming there. Okay, whatever. Oh, okay, you know what? Guys, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, cool. That's it. That's it. All right, FG finish group. I'm gonna hit MM to mirror this. Great. I'm gonna take these two, DM, mirror these. And then MV SP to keep this perpendicular to that. All right, cool, perfect. All right, it's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. All right. Um, you know what this space will be, guys? It will be a um, I don't know, maintenance space, closet space, or something. 
Fell. Just a notch in here. Just a notch in. I want some separation here from here to here. Okay. Sorry, I've been having my thin lines on. Um, right. So we can see that these groups here, by the way, uh, select all instances visible in view. It'll select all unit one box families. All right, I have that as SV as a shortcut. It's very helpful. So if I want to select all the doors in this view, I can just do that. Or at least all the same door types, okay. Uh, we'll need to flip this door in. Um, you know what, let's match, alright, so MA is match properties, again, um, where is this guy, match properties right here, alright, so MA, I'm going to change these walls to that and that, just, 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 just watch, just watch, ET, extend single element, um, I'm going to just do, hmm. All right, you know what? Delete that, delete that, delete that. AL. Boom. ET. Boom. All right. And then I'm going to draw a wall this way. Okay, cool. Why? Because it's such a huge staircase. I figured let's just do something with it. I don't know. Okay. Um, let's take these DM again. Let's delete this. We're going to do a little trick. I'm going to select the floor. I'm going to select this. And I'm going to select this. All right. I'm going to hit HI. All right. I'm going to select this, these bad boys, DM, copy, SM, select midpoint, all right, yes, I'm getting warnings, but I'm going to do another DM, uncheck the copy, SM, because everything is, you know, symmetrical in here, this should end up exactly where it needs to be, yes, all right, so this and this can end up together. And then this can come all the way out here. Cool. Great. All right. Um, as you've noticed, this and this are the wrong wall types. So we're going to have to make these different units. But before we make them different units, let's just make keep them the same units. Um, but account for this wall thickness difference, all right, by aligning it to this door, which is, you know, in just mirrored basically from the side, all right. Now that we have that, um, let's just finish group. They will all be adjusted, and that's okay for now. Uh, we can move those back later if need be, uh, but it's, it's easier for our cause right now, all right. So... Forget about the groups now, let's worry about the interior, right? When you walk in, let's let's set you up with the bathroom. Um, let's allow join, let's change this to a five inch. All right, let's say you have a bathroom there, you have a bedroom on this side, you have a bedroom on this side. What am I saying? Okay. Oop. That was my sneaker, okay. Or my slipper, rather. 
Um, all right, so it's disallow join, disallow join. Let's also make sure that these walls aren't fly. Okay, see, when connected, let's just do 10 feet. Also, fun fact, it's very helpful to work with two windows open at the same time or multiple windows at the same time. Um, so you do that by just hitting WT, all right? That is a default option. That is not like a custom thing, all right? So um, I'm gonna load in some families real quick. Just stand by just so we can make this process a lot easier and you don't have to watch me load in um, a bunch of toilets and stuff like that. But the way I would be doing it is just going through load family um, and you know selecting through any of the stuff that they have here. Um, I might or may not uh, be copying elements from other projects that I've done. Um, but we'll find out shortly. Okay, BRB. All right, welcome back everyone. I have families loaded up. Uh, let's get back to what we were doing. Let's create a little, uh, I guess like a two bedroom with maybe like an office space in here. Yeah, that's probably what we got going on. All right, uh, as you can see, I changed the windows because I hated them. Uh, I pulled something in from another project. Um, so let's, let's go back to our interior group here. Um, but do, do, do. all right, let's set that to two feet. All right, let's get this going. Let's do a DM draw mirror so we can flip that and not have to draw it. Let's do seven foot two. Is that right? Seven foot two. Let's do this seven foot two. Six. Nope, sorry, I have it right the first time. All right, so 10 foot two. Seven foot, oh my God, seven foot two, 10 foot six, all right. Um, okay, let's see. So, I don't know, I'm just going to play around a little bit and see what we have going on. Way. Sorry everyone, uh, I'm making a closet, I'm making a two closets, one for the dish, uh, washing washer dryer, one for just a walking, you know, just a coat closet for when you walk in. 
Um, let's change the width uh, to this to two for four. Okay, so you know what we need to do. Let's just do an offset. Let's do. Let's get this guy another foot over here. We'll do a trim. Sorry, no, we won't. Not yet, at least. We'll undo that guy. We'll do a trim here. Trim here. That's fine. We'll bring this guy back. Cool. Okay. Um. Do this guy at 30. Alright, let's bring our line of thicknesses back. Okay, cool. Alright, so we have something nicer going on. Alright. Um, for here, let's see here. I have a little sketch drawn out for myself. Um, okay, let's do 14 feet from here. We're almost there. Actually, wow, okay. Let's do disallow. It's already disallowed. Look at us. <clears throat> um, now what do we want? We want this to be 5 foot 9. Alright, so let's get rid of that window. Let's put this window in the center of that room. Okay. Let's do FG, finish that group. Okay. So. Now that we have this, you can always hold control and select something to drag a duplicate of that, which is amazing. All right, so let's do 10 feet here. Let's drag this here, do this, 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 this. I'm untoggling the <clears throat> the um, disallow join. Okay, so I don't know why I was doing this. I had the sketch in mind. It's not working here. All right, so let's just throw this all the way up. No way, Jose. That's not going to fly. That is not going to fly. Alright, back to the drawing board. I'll be RB. Okay, so this is what we did. Uh, this is what I thought I was making a mistake on. We're going to pull this back to a line there. Okay. Um, we're going to put a door here. I'm going to tab into the group so I can select the door individually. I'm going to hit CS to create similar so I don't have to go through the door types and make sure that I'm selecting the right type, so on and so forth. Three foot is, well, let's just, let's, you know, I, I'm meticulous, um, so let's, let's do this uh, two foot ten, um, which is a more appropriately sized bathroom door. Okay. I'm going to hit CM, which is the equivalent of hitting component, which is the equivalent of just what a family is, all right? So here I have a bunch of stuff here. Um, I want a toilet. I just type that in. Oop. Toilet. All right. So let's place that. I want a vanity. Okay. Lovely. Okay. Um, these dashed lines that you see are just uh, ADA clearances. All right. Um, nothing fancy. I mean, it is kind of fancy, but it's not that fancy. MM mirror, make sure copy is off. I'm going to select that axis and then draw a little wall here. For some reason, wall center line is selected again. 
which is crazy to me because no one asked me to. All right, that's just nuts. And I don't need a five inch. Let's just do a three inch there. And then disallow join because it's touching the exterior. Okay, cool. So now we got a unit there that everyone can be proud of. Um, and we can move on. All right. So we have a really wide hallway here. All right. Um, so we can we can eat into that. Let's take one of these walls, do a create similar. Um, come out to I don't know. Let's do two foot five. I'm saying two foot five because I want to count for the five inches that this wall should be. Okay, it is. So is this two foot deep? Okay. That's too much. We don't need that much. Well, we can take that much. Let's see what this is. All right, yeah, so we can take that much. So we can also, once you have a dimension, um, you can select that element and then just go into the dimension instead of the temporary dimension and then change change your number in there. Uh, so let's just do four feet there. Okay. All right, so now that's a closet for this bedroom in here. Beautiful. Okay, um, BRB, I need some special doors. One second. All right, and we are back. So, uh, let's see, do we want these? That's fine for now. We can add a rod. This family's broken a little bit, you need because the way the graphics are set, it's a 2D element so that it sits on one plane, and because that plane is identical to the surface of the floor, it these uh, you know hangers are hidden um, as a result of that. What can be done if anyone who here is listening that is a little more advanced, uh, what can be done for that is you can use those hangers you know you draw those in as a detail element um then nest that in into a family just a, a, a detail family add a height parameter to it okay save that as a family then nest that into a third detail family that has the first and the second families nested into there um, actually, no, you don't need the third part. You just need the second part. And then the second part, because you're giving it a height parameter, uh, it'll also adjust, you know, to show the graphics for whatever level you set it at, which is pretty cool. <laughs> anyway, okay, so let's add a door here. Uh, I'm gonna do this, create similar. Do a CM bed. Let's do a queen. Okay. I'm pretty much set there. This bedroom is pretty large, and the living room that I see left over is pretty small. So, what we're going to do is take all of this and just shrink it. All right, even this door, we're going to go to a 2 foot 10 and 2 foot 2 inches. Um, you know, we're going we're gonna to take it where we can, my man. All right, so what are we at here? This to this, 6 inches, 6 and a half. So let's move it 2.5 inches. So where that cancel, cancel, cancel. Uh, it's oh, it was gonna delete this dimension because when I had when I did MV to move, select these, hit enter. Uh, I had disjoin on. When I hit disjoin, it breaks all of relationships with everything that it has, dimensions, tags, anything. Right? Usually, you want to have disjoin deselected 
if you don't want I don't know text tags dimensions affected on other sheets right so like I said let's move this up uh, 2.5 inches so that our distance to that uh, door opening is 4 inches and now we have a little bit of a wider living room space hmm boy oh boy whatever man it is what it is you know all right brb okay um so what we need to do is just make this a lot shorter we can leave that alone we can leave that whatever that will just be you know let's just delete this right away okay. let's take all these elements and then shift it uh, let's get rid of our 5 and 11 30 seconds of an inch there so we're at 11 feet all right now let's shrink down even further let's do another foot yeah okay yeah that's good it's a small bedroom you have a bigger bedroom over here that's going to have to use some borrowed light um in whatever you know zoning permitted areas that allow you to do that okay so uh, I'm just going to go back in here real quick and move this guy at least a little bit closer to the center of that bedroom. Same with this. Okay. So now we have almost, we're almost done. So I'm going to do CM, do some casework in here. Uh, let's just throw some stuff in here. All right, let's do a 15. Okay, that's very small. Let's do a 24. Copy S E S E. Right, I don't want to do all that. I don't want to jump around and just do a bunch of casework. Let's do a stove range. That's what we call. Them. All right. Okay. Um. Do a create similar so we don't have to search so much. Let's do an 18. Alright. Let's do a sync. Let's do another one of these. Let's just copy it. S E. S E. Let's do C M. Grab a fridge. doesn't you never see you know refrigerators butted up against a counter like flush there's always a little gap you want to keep that gap um, and then here we can just finish this off with um, a little end wall again it just keeps going to exterior why stop that I've literally asked you a million times okay <clears throat> So this changes to a three inch. Create similar. Um, bum, 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 bum. Okay, cool. All right. So we have a little kitchen space. We can add some tables. Let's do dining. Um, four chairs. That's pretty big. That's huge. All right. All right. Let's do a couch. Medium. That's not very medium. Now we're gonna. This is a smaller space, I suppose. You know. I really think we can take another foot away from the, the bedroom needs to be like nine foot minimum and it's just it's just not right that the kitchen and the living room space will be so small so we're gonna change that all right 
everything's tucked in. Yes, this kind of sucks, but you know what? <clears throat> it's better. It's better than having a really small living space. Um, let's do double door. Uh, it's got. Okay, this actually fits perfectly. Nice. nice. All right. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. All right, guys, we're almost there. We're almost there. So here, I'm going to do another one of these. Um, that's good where it is. I'm going to do an MV move. Gonna snap that there. I'm going to create similar here. Okay, that's just fits perfectly. Awesome. M. Oh, God, was already selected. I could hit MM. Um, wall unconnected, thank you. MP, two inches. Okay. Look at that, we got something happening here. All right? Almost done, people. Almost done. Uh, let's make sure that that doesn't obstruct the bed. Okay, cool. You know, I don't want to give anyone a design that doesn't work. And by anyone, I mean you guys. Alright, let's make sure this is not just two feet because it doesn't need to be any bigger if it's not a full walk-in. Um, there we go. There we go. I don't mind this at all. All right, now we have all this, right? We can copy this, make sure that we don't. Oops. All right, let's copy from here. Let's deselect the outside box. Let's group this. Unit one, uh, base instead of box. We're going to edit the, ba the box. We're going to go into edit group, add. We're going to add this interior group. We're going to hit finish. Nope. OK, cool. So this door didn't make it. Anyway, so we're going to go back into the uh, main group. We're going to remove. And then we're going to finish. We're going to remove the interior group and we're going to hit finish just so that they remain separate, okay? Um, but they'll still remain populated across, you know, all these floors. Oh, sorry, I jumped the gun. We should have we should have copy pasted all of these first up, up across all the floors and then added them to the group. So, oh, this is the box. Okay, cool. All right, fantastic. All right, now that we're back here, we can make them adjust this, add this door back to our group, hit finish. Okay, cool. So now that we're ready to populate our whole place, let's select SV. All right, I'm going to select all these uh, exterior groups. I'm going to hit Control C, paste, align to selected levels. 
Uh, I'm going to select all the levels above. I'm going to hit OK. Oh, I selected level 2 as well because, and that's a problem because we're already in level 2. So, uh, P, P, paste the selected levels, 3 to 6 instead of 2 to 6. Alright, now that we have that, beautiful. Alright, and we'll fix all this stuff in, in a minute. Um, but let's get back to our floor view. Here, let's just do it uh, side by side. I'm going to hit ZA to zoom all. Okay. I'm going to just decrease the scale so that we see the line weights from a, a further zoomed out view. And then I can do the same thing here as well. I guess there's no line weights here because we're not cutting. Right. Okay, anyway. Um, so, what do we want to do now? First and foremost, let's make sure we our floor plates are also pasted all the way up. Let's do a PP. 3 to 6. We can add the roof as well because we can modify it. Um, actually, we can just leave those because we'll want some... We'll want one of them to access the stair, whichever one that might be. I guess the one in the back. So let's get rid of this one. Alright, cool. Uh, now that we have that, we can go back to here. And now, let me show you guys why we wanted to populate these groups after we populated the building with the exterior first, okay? So, just doing some cleanup real quick, okay? I see some walls set at 12 feet or set to the floor above, which I don't want, because that will give us problems later on. I want those unconnected and at 10 feet, all right? If I have drop ceilings or something, those will be, those will just, you know, be unobstructed. And later on, if I'm doing a section view or a detail view and I need that to go up, that's when I can attach it. That's when it's really most, you know, important. Um, depending on the scope of your work, <coughs> um, no, well, no matter the scope of your work, always, always start off this way. If you need to then actually model the uh, walls to the ceiling heights, do so after setting your ceiling heights uh, like once and for all, once they're baked in. Otherwise, don't do it just yet. Keep them low and this will keep you from having too many errors down the road. Okay, so let's, let's hit finish. Uh, and again, here, let me set the shadows on so we can kind of see a little better. Let's bring this back so we can see the other side. Okay, so we have the unit here, right? And then this is our exterior group, uh, our box group. So we'll go in this box group. Uh, once we're in this box group, we're going to add our interior group. Once we add our interior group, we'll hit finish. And then all the exterior groups will be populated with the interior groups because we added it to the group. But you want these to remain separate. Um, so what we're going to do is click back into the box group, hit remove, remove the interior group from it, hit finish once more, and it will separate the exterior groups from the interior groups from all of them, right? So as you can see, they're all separated from one another. Okay, now, now that we have everything in place, we can start to modify our sides here. Um, let's see here. So I'm going to duplicate this guy and I'm going to name him a unit 1.1 .1 because it's just going to be a very small variation and it's not going to be an entirely different group. All right. 
So now I'm going to change this wall into that wall. And bring this back a little bit. Make sure the uh, disallow join is turned off now. And then I'm going to trim those. Okay. And now you're wondering, well, well, what are we going to do about this unit? Well, I'll tell you shortly. Okay. Um, we might very well have to remove all of these uh, from this stack. Okay, which is fine. So and we can do that very easily. Um, so okay, now let, let's let's look at this closely, right? This wall actually wants to come all the way here, and then this wall wants to come here. Okay, and then it looks like we have a an alignment issue, which is easy to believe because we just did a match property. Okay, great, perfect. So now, voila. So now this is our new unit type, okay? This is one on its own. If I do a select all, I only get one. I can confirm that here in my properties bar with this number that says one. Oh my god, I hope I hope I haven't been too quiet. I just realized how far away I've been sitting. Um, okay, so now I can just do a match properties. And because it's because it was just a duplicate of the former uh, exterior group. Once I do a match properties of this type to this type, everything should remain aligned um, and I really shouldn't see any problems. All right, so let's try it. And there we go. Okay, let's try it on the other side. Let's get rid of this section box real quick. And again, because everything was mirrored and duplicated, this should work out very cleanly. And boom. All right. Beautiful. Okie doke. So now we have all that. This is looking really nice. We can take these walls, this wall, this wall, and you can hold control to select uh, multiple elements. I'm going to hit control C and I'm going to hit PP because that's my shortcut again paste to um, selected levels. I'm going to select to three to six. Yes. All right. That clears that up. I, th I think I should have done this before. Okay, cool. These are all set to uh, disallow join. So I'm just gonna, going to do EA extend all or extend multiple elements. I'm going to select this face. I'm just going to extend all those. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So these are the stairwalls. Okay. All right, cool. Beautiful. Okay. Now, since we're outside, um, actually, no, let's, let's wrap up this, uh, this unit problem. Okay. So now, right, uh, just like we did for this exterior group, we're going to do for this interior group. We're going to duplicate it and rename it to have some sort of language that is consistent, right? So this is unit 1.1 base, which is going to be a reflection of the 1.1 box. So now that we have the separate uh, unit type, we can come in here and it looks like all we can do is take all this stuff and bring it down. Nothing else we can do. And that's it. Okay. I'm going to hit FG to finish group. Now, where are we? This is this guy. I'm going to hit BX to box selection. I'm going to bring this section box there so I can see what's going on in section here and what's going on above. All right. So if I hit SA, select all, that's the only one in existence. And same logic. If I do a match properties, so that this changes into this, uh, these should all be okay. So let's try it. Uh, M A. Okay, okay, okay. It's tough to see there, so let's just try it here instead, um, or look at it from this way. So we had that one wall. Where is it? I guess plan is best. All right, so there's that wall. 
and it hits perfectly all the way up. Voila. Okay. Now, uh, let's get rid of the section box again. Um, actually, let's control Z. Let's go back. This side and this side. This side still needs to be fixed. So let's do same thing. M A mesh properties. Select that and boom. All right, perfect. If everyone saw that shift, right? I'm gonna do Control Z and back and forth. Right. Okay. So now I'm gonna do B X. Just so we're on this side now. Okay. And then same thing. Section. Oops. And then M A. So if I create a new view, plan view, floor plan, let's go to floor five. Hit OK. Here we are on this side. These all look good. I have no issues here. All right. Fantastic. So now let's go come back here on floor two and focus on this. Um, actually, since we're here, let's do it this way. We need all these floors visible so that we know that everything is right. Um, let's close this. Let's close floor two. Open floor one. Floor two. Floor three. Four. Floor six. I don't need floor one actually. All right. So I'm going to hit WT. Zoom all. All right. I have my floor two here. I'm going to focus on this guy. What do I need on my floor two that I don't have on my floor three? Uh, well, let's see. I have this staircase, this wall, this wall. I think these walls are already done. Yep. This railing. You don't have to select the stair hand railing separately because that'll come with it. Just this hand, hand railing we drew in separately. Also the doors. The doors will come in automatically as if you have a wall selected, funny enough. All right, so we need all these things, right? We have them. I'm going to just do a control copy and then paste, align to selected levels, three, four, five, six. Okay, I forgot these guys. This, let me make sure. Yeah, okay. This and that. Control C, PP, three through six. All right. Let's make sure that this joined properly. Great. So now if I go to my 3D view, um, take off the section box, it's looking nice and clean. All right. It's a little boring, but we can work on that shortly. That's fine. All right. Um, so let's go to floor two. Let's go back in here. Uh, what do we want? You know, let's let's add some bay windows or something, All right? So let's do. Let's take this wall. Creates. Actually, let's copy this so we don't have to place the windows again. Uh, let's do a two. Let's do two feet. Okay. Create similar. Draw this there, and then mirror there. Fantastic. Let's make sure this is that, and this is that. SL to split this, so I don't have to do this a million times. OK. SL. SL. Oops. I messed up there. Okay. All right, cool. Um, and then what's this distance? We should probably know that so that it's the same all the way across. Yeah, we should make that consistent. Uh, it's, I like one foot two.
make sure these are all the same. Okay, cool. Gonna split this. We can do delete in inner segment. Fantastic. Okay. Um, all right, is this one foot two? I don't know. Sorry, everyone. It's just important to keep keep your model very clean. You know, so I'm not sorry. It's important to keep your model clean. And whenever, you know, as, as an architect, if someone asks you why something is where it is, you should know exactly what to say. Whether that answer may be I put it there because I thought that that was a good dimension to maintain, okay? But if you just said, oh, I don't know, I just put it there for whatever, that's not good. But if you said what I just said, which is, you know, I think that's a reasonable place to uh, have it, it meets code, um, it's comfortable, I've tested it, I've seen it before, whatever, you know? Um, Whatever your reasoning is, just give just give reasoning. That's the that's the most important thing you can do. Um, but to say I don't know, I just put it there because for no reason. That's that's not good enough. Um, sorry, I forgot two inches. Okay, I'll set two inches. Okay, S L S L S L. Okay, don't attach. So let's see what that gives us. All right, that gives us some variation in the facade, right? That's kind of cool. Um, and then it happens on the other side as well, obviously. So just remember that we did have to change this floor. Um, and we should probably go back and change it on this side. We can take this DMSM, do this whole thing. There we go, beautiful. It's not in a closed loop. Oh. Okay, so now we can copy this floor. Um, go to our 3D view again. Maybe take this and this, do BX. I just don't like, I, I do BX so that I get the section box relatively to where I want it without having to do it, like drag it manually a million times. Uh, but anyway, what we want to do is take these floors now, delete them because we have a new floor plate. And before we copy and paste all of these, let's go back to floor two and make sure that uh, we're ready to copy and paste those because actually we probably want one more, um, one more uh, bay. So let's actually do that here. Um, I'm just going to do this honestly. Actually, no, that's not that's not good. No, that's not working. <laughs> I thought it would work. Okay. Actually, what will work though is if I do it this way. I just want to match them. I'm going to hit SP so and then so it stays perpendicular to whatever I'm selecting, which was that. Okay. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to move it based off the center line to this. I want this one actually. And then extend, extend, align, align, create similar, and 
Boom, I just saved myself some work. Okay. Like measuring and stuff, right? Okay, so. Trim, trim, trim. Finish group, FG. Okay. Now let's take this floor plate. Let's take this guy. We can copy it straight from this endpoint because they're identical. All right, SL. And if I'm moving very fast and you're like, oh my god, I can't move this fast, don't worry, it took like a good few weeks to, you know, be able to move this fast. But the uh, thing is, when you want to go this fast and you're not used to it, um, just go very slow. Go very slow at first because you're not going to get this right away. Um, no one does. I mean, it's like it's like anything else. you got to take it very slow. All right, so let's take this floor. We can do a PP. Paste to selected levels, three to six. Do that. Um, actually, let's delete the floor roof as well because we need the roof to follow those bays as well so let's go paste that to the roof let's undo the section box and there we have something right cool let's go back to floor two and let's study this a little bit we can add some windows on here i mean not i mean honestly this is fine I just love windows in a uh, in a bathroom. I just don't think there's anything better. Okay. So that'll be added on that side as well. What about this guy? This one's tough because you have a bathtub here and then waterproofing issues. So it's not recommended, um, but this is fictional, so <laughs> we're just going to do it here. Oh, I just noticed that, oh, I just noticed that this and this are weird, so honestly, this really should just come right here. Okay, and then let's add that window, just because this isn't a real project. All right, let's go back to our 3D. Let's take this and this BX because I need to delete those floors again. Um, so we just made that change. Okay. All right, let's go back to floor two. Move here, plus two inches. Is our offset fantastic? Now we have to do that here as well. Move snap to perpendicular and then move another two inches and then FM to finish model. Escape, don't attach. All right, now again we can take this and then paste it all the way up and to the roof. All right, so this looks pretty much done. Could we go back here and uh, make this a much more reasonable hallway? Yes, but we're not going to take the time to do that right now. All right, um, so we have that. And now we can, you know, start doing some sheets. Uh, these are the default sheets that come in here. Um, like any family, you can hit edit family so we can go in here. Uh, we can take this guy. This is our, so this is your overall dimension that this guy, this guy, Autodesk is giving us, right? So 36, so that's a 40, 30 by 42, right? Yes. Um, I don't like these to really even be showing, so these should be invisible. Um, Invisible lines, Psh, man. I just don't like the way it's showing invisible lines. It's just weird. Okay, okay, dude. Yeah. Oh. All right. Okay. Anyway, so my point being, guys. Um, you can modify this to whatever you need it to look like. You can get rid of this. You can go to insert, uh, import image, add your own image. Um, you know, 
So whatever you need. I don't know where I don't know where I have my images for my logos. But <laughs> but if you wanted to, this is where you edit all that, right? Um, some things are labels, some things are just plain text, right? Uh, labels will extract information from the project and present it here. Like for example, this label, let's go in here, is client name and the sample here, if you don't have a client name put in, it will just show up as client name. All right. So in the project, when you go into project information, uh, you can put in the client name and it will show up on your title block. Uh, same thing with a lot of these things. This is your tag label for sheet number, uh, sheet name, project name, so on and so forth. So that you don't have to manually put these in every single time you create something. All right. Uh, we're just going to use this default 30 by 42 that they have. So we want our floor one on here. Okay. Okay, fine. I just don't like where these elevation markers are. I'm just going to drag these in. Okay. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just I am so used to having my title on the right and the line going left like this. So this is just weird for me. Okay. Anyway. Um, Alright, so then here we go. We, we have our floor one. Let's change the scale for all of these. Uh, just so that they're all the same. Let's do 330 seconds. Yes, I know that's a little small, but whatever. Alright, once you have this here, let's do our typical. Let's just do a floor two. drag that so that these guys match. All right. And when you're lining up uh, views, when it's the same scale and it's the same type, so plan to plan, uh, 3 30 seconds of an inch to 3 30 seconds of an inch, you will see a, there you go, a reference dash line that shows you, hey, these plans are now aligned. Okay. And then same thing when you're dragging the uh, view titles, they will show up with that line. When you want to modify this, you have to modify it, you have to select it independently from the view. But to stretch it, you have to select the view <laughs> to modify that. It's very odd. Okay? So anyway, as you saw, to place views on a sheet, you literally just drag them. You can only place one view on one sheet. If you want to place this view on another sheet, what you have to do is you just duplicate. Uh, if you want to duplicate it, looking the same with the same annotations, same style, same everything, you do duplicate with detailing. I always recommend duplicate with detailing because if you don't, you just get a raw uh, you just get a raw view of whatever you're duplicating, right? You'll get all the reference planes, anything that anything that can be shown will be shown and it will be shown without any styles or graphic like overrides. So, um, just know that but to each their own. And offices have view templates that you can assign so that the view graphics are standardized across the sheets. All right, so we have for one, for two, and those are basically our typical uh, typical plans. I guess we can add a roof plan here. Uh, next out of that, go in here, roof plan. Didn't change the scale of that. I'm going to hide these because I think once we have. It depends, you know. I mean, look, these are all the same plan. Um, so I don't think I need to show someone where the elevation markers are each single time, on, you know, since they're stacked. It just doesn't make. To me, it doesn't make sense. So I can just I can eliminate those and save some space, and I will. And here we go. <laughs> all right, so all right, so we have a ground floor plan, um, typical floor plan, and then and then a roof plan, right? 
So if we go in here, we can see uh, maybe, well, yeah, let's do this. We'll go to this elevation. Let's go to our 3D. Let's just see what's going on real quick. Let's see what we haven't completed yet. Um, so this staircase here, this is our front, right? Yeah. So this staircase here can go. Oh man, we never modified the stair for, okay, it doesn't matter right now. Okay, so let's just align that to there and then align this to there. Okay, and then we can close out this guy here. And then for this, let's go to floor six. Let's grab this wall, this wall, this wall, and this wall. Copy. And while we're here, let's just modify, edit that so it doesn't look so terrible. This again and this again and this again. Okay, cool. Let's go to roof. I'm going to hit PA, align to selected view, or align to current view rather. Let's make sure that these are all the same mold types because I want them to be. Alright, we can allow join now and allow join and allow join. If you're having trouble selecting the wall because there's multiple overlapping walls, just select it, hit HI, and then you can isolate. And then hit HR to go back to unisolate. All right. Um, this one here, allow join. Okay. So let's trim that. We're going to get rid of this door here. And then we can just bring this all the way over here. Okay. Because we need one, one staircase to at least go to the roof. So let's take all of these walls, all of these walls, because we need a parapet up top here, um, and I don't want to redraw everything, you know, like, there's no point. So I'm going to do control copy, PP, paste them to the roof. Uh, we have an overlap here, but that's fine. I'm just going to do extend element to here, and that will solve it. All right. I'm just going to do a selection drag, a uh, drag selection here, and then go to filter, check none, but check the windows again, and then delete. I don't want any of those windows. I'm going to so All right, because all of these are... Yeah, yeah. It's not allowing me to tab and select everything because it'll stop where I've asked it to disallow join. So I'm going to allow join at those locations and then, and then we'll be back after this short brief message just kidding there's no short brief message all right so here we go here we go almost there almost there just these guys and then we're done okay so let's do four feet beautiful okay looking good looking good All right, let's go to floor one. Uh, curtain walls. Let's do a wall. Now, if you go all the way to the bottom here, storefront, exterior glazing, curtain wall. 
this is all the same type of thing they just have different rules set in here like railings like everything else it's like asking you about spacing uh, of your mullions what type of mullions the depth the offset and then it has like nested parameters within nested parameters and family types <coughs> excuse me and so on and so forth so we can just just click storefront um, I like to do disallow join go figure uh, for storefronts because storefronts can be very troublesome uh, by using disallow join it gives you a lot of control uh, versus not using it okay so let's just let's just pretend we have a design and let's just pretend that this is something that an architect would do okay all right here we go here we go here we go you know let's get rid of this let's get rid of this let's go back to 4 1 let me teach you guys a trick so um, fun fact when you have a curtain wall these panels can be heavily customized actually uh, but to just keep things simple let's unpin it all right that's also up here pin unpin so let's unpin it okay let's go to insert load family let's go to door and we're at door curtain wall door here we go storefront beautiful look at that so what are we gonna do we can change this panel now to a door curtain wall storefront okay how beautiful is that and it has handles and everything all right so now we don't have to do anything else but we do want to get rid of this bottom million you do have to unpin that as well and delete it so now we have some doors that are part of the curtain wall all right and then let's just do another one here again i don't really have a design for this uh ground floor as you can already tell but that's fine um, and then with you know if you wanted to play around with the curtain grids the door stretches with the curtain grids so uh, be mindful of that and so on and so forth okay cool so let's go to floor one these graphics are awful because as you can see the length of the door panel did not stretch out far enough to be the actual uh, half distance to the opening so you need to go in there and, and mess around with that and the more you mess around with like th things in Revit the more you will learn about how th everything works um, so like for example here you can just go edit family and then just go through all the views here uh, and start to see you know how things work like here here are the lines uh, so these are actually nested families so you'd have to go edit that family um, and once you're in this family you know you, if this view doesn't make sense then just check all the other views because there's probably something that that does make sense so here we are the width uh, actual angle so this width is tied to the parameters in here so this width here should equal something you know you can you can start to you can start to play with everything um, but it's it's really helpful to dig in deep like this um, this is how I learned this is how all like uh, the great Revit users learned um, so it's 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 a good way to go about okay so let's go back to our sheet here um, let's bring in the south elevation and just like we did with our plans we can select them all at once to change the scale so let's just change these to 330 seconds so that they match our floor plan um, let's drop this down a little bit let's bring this here let's drop down way too much okay. all right 
so now we have we have some drawings and it's starting to look good now I like to line these up side by side so that I have the same spacing from the view bar uh, view title to my view um, I'm just again very particular uh, I think we have it really easy in our day. Okay, architects back in the day, they used to have to do a, a, a grueling amount of work, all right? They used to have to sit there and like stretch their bodies over, I don't know, like five, six foot long tables. Everyone's smoking cigarettes. You had to draw everything very meticulously. We here have everything automated. We draw one thing and we can just say, hey, show it to me in a section and then we'll show it to you in a section. Um, so don't, don't, don't be lazy, have everything even, um, everything should make sense, you know, everything is pretty important, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise, okay, okay, alright, so what I'm trying to do here is just drag these so that they're lined up to this one over here, and they're pretty much lined up, okay. So, uh, to go into views, you double click. To get out of them, double click outside of the, the view. Uh, I set up the shortcut DA. I didn't have any shortcuts left available, so DA is what I had. So I just hit DA to get out of it. If you see me do that, that's what I'm doing. Um, so, now, views, right? I want, I want my elevations to... Well, I want, them, I want them to do a few things, but the most important thing is I want them to look the same, have the same shadow style, same lighting quality, same depth, everything, right? So how do I do that once so that I don't have to do it a million times over again? That, my good people, is where view templates come in, all right? So... In part one, I was talking about view templates and uh, your visibility graphics override. So when you're in a view, right, you go here and this is your visibility graphics override. The main driving factor of how things are represented, like this wall thickness right now, uh, it's being determined by object styles, okay? So if we look at walls in here, it's a line thickness of four okay that is what's driving that now if I want to change that I for all the walls in this view I can go into here visibility graphics override and change that into here walls cut lines right and then change the thickness here so I can go to six hit OK hit OK and there we go now it's just got fatter now I want this wall to be fatter than the rest, so I want it to be independent, and I only want it to happen in this view only. I can go click on the wall, override graphics and view by element. If I did it by category, it would we would just be doing it the way we just did, right? By selecting the walls and the visibility graphics override over here. But here I'm going to do by element. Oop, what did we just do? Um, so right click, override graphics by element. Here we can do the cut lines, you know, pattern, uh, weight, let's do something visibly different, okay, nine, all right, cool. Now, let's undo that because that's just silly, and let's undo the six because that's too thick. What do we want to do though, right? Let's say I want, I'm coming back to here, let's say I want my walls to show gray. Uh, so I'll go to here, cut patterns, right? Cut patterns, override, solid fill. Let's do a light gray. Hit OK, hit OK, hit OK. Now all my walls are gray. That's beautiful, right? But let's go back to our sheet. That only happened to this view. I want it to happen to this view as well. Well, what we can do is, if you look over here, identity data, 
there's this option here, view template. It's set to none currently. All right. By default, you have these guys here and here and here. All right. Uh, since we modified this one, we can go into view, view templates, create template from current view, and let's use this. Floor plan. Can't type. 30 seconds of an inch. And that's really all I need to know right now. Okay? So 330 seconds of an inch. Everything is set because we already set it before. Alright? So now let's set this one to what well, we just set up. Floor plan. 330 seconds of an inch. Hit OK. Click to get outside. Let's select all the views at once so we don't have to do it individually. And then go to view template and then assign the floor plan 330 seconds. All right, hit OK. And now you will see that all of them just got updated, right? All of them are showing gray from the previous white. Yep, beautiful. So now even here we can see, not that we couldn't see the difference before because the cut line is thicker than a non-cut line. Um, but regardless, that's how you do that. So now if we wanted to change, let's say, you know, the gray. Let's move this over here. Let's say we wanted to move the gray or change the gray. I'm going to hit W to jump to walls to, let's say, hot pink. We'll hit OK, hit OK. And it will change to hot pink for all of them. Right. So now you can use these view templates for diagrams, different elevations, different uh, enlarged plans, egress plans, area plans, um, you name it. You know, So you can get really creative there. Um, and now you know a little bit about the hierarchy of uh, graphics and overrides. So one thing that you might wonder about is like, well, OK, you showed me how to do um, how to change the properties of how walls are shown, okay, in a view template, but those are just walls. What if there's one type of wall that I want to show differently in a view template across, you know, different sheets, different views? Uh, much like how we change that one different wall to show much thicker than the rest of the walls, right? Uh, but we want that to be in our view template. So what we can do for example, we have this three inch wall. Let's look at this, right? It says basic wall, three inches. This is the type, this is the family. What we changed in the visibility graphics override is the family, which is just a wall, okay? These are the things that we could have changed in the visibility graphics override in the view template for the general elements. This is the type. There was no, you know, drop down menu to say hey let me change the how three inch generic shows up so what can we do what can, what we can do is go into our uh, view template once we go into our view template we can go into the VG overrides which is basically this but you're working on the template now right you can go to filters you can go to edit new because we don't have any created yet so we'll have to make, make one you go here to make one well let's say uh, walls 3 inch. This filter name is specific. Alright, the way you name filters is you name them so that it's it's obvious what you're selecting. That's it, right? You don't try to name it for what you're trying to do. I'm not going to say hide walls that are 3 inches. I'm not going to say walls 3 inches red. That's not how it works. W the filter name is just what we're trying to filter out. That's it, okay? So walls, three inches. So now that we have that, that's just the name. Well, out of everything in Revit, what are we trying to look at? Well, we want walls. So I'm gonna jump to walls, hit select, okay. All right, now here are the rules that you can create for your filter. All, you know, all, and all rules must be true or one or the other rule must be true, or all of them, whatever. Um, I don't know. So walls, we're going to do type, right? Contains 
because I'm, I'm not trying to be any more specific than that. Three inches. Okay. Now, now we created a filter. Now we're going to add that filter. Walls, three inches. Okay. Now that filter is working. What do we want to do with it? Because right now we're not giving it any overrides. We want to change that three inch wall to a pink. That's it. All right. The line thickness over here, that will remain the same as the view template as long as it's not overridden and that rule of thumb you know, can be followed across a lot of things in Revit. All right. So now here we are. That filter is selecting only the three inch uh, walls that we created. Right, so if we have if we jump to like four four, it'll have the same thing. Four five, so on and so forth. Right. So that's the beautiful thing about view templates and and be able to control them with uh, filters. Now now we need one for this. So let's just work on this one independently. Uh, let's let's turn shadows on. Um, let's change the lighting so that it's not so dark because that's too much okay that's much better all right um, I think that's it that's really it right now and then I guess we can do silhouettes uh, let's do line weight of four all right so that we get some line weight there and then we can in modify you have this join option here so once you join objects those silhouette lines will disappear as you connect the walls between one another. Right? So that it doesn't look so so choppy and you have better graphic representation. Alright guys, I'm going to take a quick break, because I need to just at least drink some water or something. Oh my gosh. Alright guys, and we're back. <clears throat> so, I joined all the walls, um, and just like we did with the floor plans when we created a view template, uh, I applied it to this sheet, as, to this view as well. So this one is looking good. Um, I'm noticing that this is our front wall facade. This is looking really bare, but again, I'm not here to teach you how to design. I'm here to teach you how to use Revit. All right. Uh, I will teach you how to design in another course. So I'm going to control copy that. And just to add some light to the hallways. Um, sorry, my phone is usually never on. That's crazy. Okay. Get out of there. Okay. So I copied that on all the floors. Is there anything we can add to it? No, I mean it's just a staircase. I guess I mean I guess we could add a stair, a window to the staircase. Um, just some issues with that safe, you know, fire safety concerns and such. Um, since we're here, let's just align it to something. <coughs> Um, but for the sake of just having a nicer looking elevation, let's just add some windows. Okay. Like that, you know, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It's fine. Everything's fine. Okay, cool. So, um, one thing we can add is, let's see, we can do a section. Right? If you go to view, section, I just have shift S as my shortcut. So let's do a section this way, and let's have a section here. We don't need that depth. All right, let's just go look at it. Looks pretty good. All right, 330 seconds. Um, let's X out of this. Let's open up this category here. Oh, we have to exit the view first before we can place another view. Um, let's put this section here. All right, <clears throat> so that section is cutting that way, so that means can we, would it be a 
monitor. Oh, there's the, it's the opposite way. Whatever. Okay. Fine. Do we really not have space? Well, alright, look, since we're not showing these elevations, I'm going to hide them. <coughs> alright. It's only fair. I'm not going to show blank markers there. Okay. Do we have space now? No, we don't. I'm going to go to this title block. I'm going to get rid of this. Because, you know what? I'll tell myself my extents, thank you very much. And that's a crazy amount of extents anyway. So let's do half. Let's do three eighths of an inch. Honestly. All right, copy. Let's do three quarters of an inch because that's I mean, honestly it's probably a little more. Anyway, you want to get you want to get your title block dimensions from wherever you're submitting, right? Because they will tell you uh, if they have a preference to their title blocks or not. So anyway, this is a cleaner looking one. I like this one. We're gonna use this one. We're going to overwrite this. Thank you. Good. Okay, cool. Now we give ourselves some more space. Let's move those guys here. Alright, so a thing about sections, okay? I can move this and it won't affect the section. But if I move this, it'll affect the section, okay? So just know that. Because uh, if you have like Vis, you know, graphic visibility issues. Uh, this is the way you can fix that. Since I don't have room that way, I'm just going to change this to over here. And I just need to drop this down because I don't want that overlapping. Building section, uh, south. like we're starting to you know get a project right so once you're in here you'll notice that these floors look awful um, we can do a join here I like to select this so that I don't have to select uh, the floor so many times but by doing that now you're modifying the object you know to to, to show the, to how it's connecting, right? So now the floor is saying that it's going to extend to this uh, extent. Um, typically, this wall would have um, a finish, right? So we would see, you know, some sheathing, some jip, uh, what have you. So this this floor here would end at the face of the stud, typically, okay? Um, and then the finish can run up. The stud can start here and then go up again, right? So now this is why you don't need to attach uh, your walls to the floor. Uh, just attach walls to walls, and then you can join them afterwards. Right, but this is the cleanest method to um, getting a good looking, good looking project. And then we have to join these as well. Uh, I 
guess I have to take this off because it doesn't make sense anymore to have it. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Now, this is starting to look good. You know? Why is that like that? That's strange. Okay. So let's do a BX. Got like a section box going here. And let's see what's happening here. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. That's looking a lot better. I st okay, did that fix itself? Yes. No, it did not. That means that that wall opening is not flush. Or is it too flush? No. Okay, I guess it's too flush. Oh, the floor has... Okay, here. The floors and the object styles have a different um, this is a five and then the walls are a four <clears throat> okay so that's why we're seeing that a thickness difference there um, so we're going to see that here as well then looking good very if you haven't seen Beer Fest, you should, everyone should watch that. Fun fact. Uh, AT, I think that's a default. But either way, AT, you can grab something and then tell it to attach to the top. So if you have a group, you can still select, you can tab into there and then hit AT to attach to top and it won't mess your group up so that's that's fun all right it's a lot of fun if you ask me um so you can select the walls or best thing i like to do is just hide hide the interior groups because you don't want there's no need to show all this in a section you know when you show this you really just want to show um well just this you know, in an elevation, you don't need to show in a building section, so it's too much information. So that's why you wouldn't really need to be attaching all the walls to the um, to the floor above. Only only the major walls, like the corridor wall here. Um, <clears throat> and so forth. So now, yeah, you could be asking me, Ardian, well. Why don't you just go in the group and change the wall height so that um, it goes to the underside of the slab? To which I would say, you are absolutely right. Totally right, and that's what I should have done for the corridor walls. Uh, but here we are. Um, and since we have these showing, uh, I'm just going to attach these guys, the ones that are cut to the floor above. Just so do my job all right since we're here at the staircase I'm going to do a FL change this to roofs offset this by 11 feet and then Boom, 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 
Offset two inches. All right. So let's go back to our sheet. Where are we? All right. Now we can join this as well. Uh, granted. Granted, these guys would actually be 12, just like that one. Just so that there can be some pitch in there, some, some sloping, because you want to drain that eventually. All right, so there we go. That looks great. That looks, you know, this looks beautiful. This actually looks really great. Um, and then, you know, same thing. If we wanted to create another section, we can do that. Um, I don't know. The world is your oyster after this, right? This is, and, and by the way, you can, you can create all sorts of views to place on here. You can, uh, let's see here. If you go to your 3D view, right? This is just your default 3D view. This is what we've been jumping to, to. Okay. So for example, I can duplicate this view here um, with detailing so it looks the same. Alright, let's n rename this Stair Axo Drawing. Okay. Now I can create this sort of 3D section drawing. Let's focus around the staircase. Alright need to fix this because now we have <laughs> uh, an entire drawing that's focused on the staircase. Alright. Oh, this is... Okay, we don't have that many floors. I was going to do a copy and paste, but then we'd have to rejoin all the floors to the walls that we did. So this is why it's important to get all your fundamentals down. Like, it, once you start modeling, if you're doing like a, you know, a stacking sort of building, Make sure you get your typical floor, like down to like every 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 little inch, right? You want you need everything perfect, uh, or else you'll be going back like I just did uh, to correct silly 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 mistakes. Um, so let's see this. Let's just paste it all the way here. Okay. Is this duplicated? No. Okay. So it doesn't. Okay, cool. All right, so now that we have this, we can bring this here. We can bring this here. Um, let's go click that. If we wanted to change uh, the levels to be on this side, we can do that. All right. I prefer it for what we're doing. I hit HI to isolate so that I don't get bogged down by other elements. So I'm going to drag that. It'll drag all of them. Alright, there we go. So now we have this view. I'm going to lock this view. Save orientation on lock view. The beauty of doing this is one, you can't change the view, okay? Uh, because if you start if you start adding text, staircase 01. Let's, let's say you start adding text, okay? Um, let's do a dimension. Uh, 
Um, so as you saw, the dimension came down to this floor. <coughs> That's because our, uh, excuse me one second. Okay, we're back. So, um, where was I? Uh, yeah, so now that we have it locked, we can unlock it, play around with it, whatever, because uh, we need to check something out, let's say. But now we can just go back to there and then restore orientation and lock view. So the view is saved, everything goes back to normal. So that, you know, because if this is on a sheet, we don't want that thing to move. All right. So this is awful. <laughs> Plus that's huge. <clears throat> And that arrow is god awful. Alright, let's do that one. Thank you. Alright. Oh, yeah, and then the dimension, right? Uh, I was trying to get the dimension of the entire length of this, but the dimension came at floor one. That's because our work plane is set to work, uh, floor one. Um, you can change that. I believe, I think it's just an architecture. So work plane here, set, show, right? So showing us at uh, floor one, I'll keep that there. We can do set, we can pick a floor plane or a reference plane, or we can just pick a plane. Um, we're just gonna pick a plane. Well, we could have just picked floor two, right? So let's just pick this plane on floor two, it doesn't matter. Now I'll do this dimension, and then it'll draw from that level, right? And then I'll hit SX uh, to set work plane because that's my shortcut for it. And then let's say I want to draw to a vertical dimensions, right? So from landing to landing, 12 feet, landing to landing, 12 feet. Landing to landing. I, don't, I don't know why you would want that, but you know, you, this is these are the sorts of things that you can do with Revit. Um, and then, yeah, I don't know, it's, it's, it looks decent. If you don't see a line there and you'd like to see a line, you can join that because that's the only reason it's not showing, it's just not joined yet. Um, and then there's something going on here. Let's do AT. And then an attach. That's good. There we go. Okay, cool. Right. So there you have it. Uh, we put together a nice little project. Uh, we got a typical floor plan, a roof plan, very undeveloped, and a very undeveloped floor uh, ground floor, and a decent, you know, axo drawing of a stair, stair, um, and some, you know, good looking good looking elevations. Uh, if a student gave this to me, um, I would give him an A+. Plus. I mean, I, I wouldn't even really care about the empty lobby or roof. Uh, however, the roof plan and the uh, ground floor plan, maybe, maybe one thing we would do is give one, give these guys a little more space, just so that you can add a, the sidewalk around uh, and give it some context and then add that same context to the roof plan maybe in a, like a half tone uh, so that it's you know so that it's showing that it's like beyond uh, to the ground floor so um, there you go I hope this was helpful please leave any questions that you have below um, and I don't know, I, just, just leave questions below because I, I will answer any questions you have. I, I, I love answering Revit questions. I don't know. Um, I love Revit. I love my job. Uh, I love architecture. And I don't know, I just wake up every morning pretty, pretty darn excited about, you know, the fact that I get to do this every day. So, um, so help me out. And that only means you get helped out, all right? All right, so again, I hope you learned something. Uh, and that's it, I don't know what else to say. 
you guys are great. I think I think you guys are understanding what what I'm trying to do here, uh, which is just I don't know make make Revit a lot simpler and a lot more clear on what its capabilities are and how to uh, work around you know the way it's built. So boom. Uh, bing, bada, bada. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. Uh, thank you so much. Um, and I will be sure to get another video going immediately so that you guys have something to go off. All right. Arrivederci.